Deb with the Happy Lemonhead channel and I thought I would give you a July garden update. Right there is my raspberries and they need to be tied up. But they're starting to flower. They'll have berries on them. Some of my older berries have been putting out a few berries. That's my berries. And one of the ways that we are preventing slugs from eating up my chard that I am growing in the grow bags, we have set up on a table next to our deck. So I had these grow bags sitting on a pallet um, next to the vegetable hut on the ground and that created a habitat for the slugs and snails that come out in the night and devour our plants. So as you can see the holes that's from the slugs and the snails. Um, some were eaten right down to the nubs. Right to the nubs. So anyways, we thought it would be a good idea to just uh, trick the slugs and put it up on a table here. Alright, there's our deck. So I'm, that is my compost. Maybe I'll give you a peek inside the compost. It's always a lovely thing to look at. There's our compost doing away. All organic matter breaking down. So over here is my squash bed. Squash and pumpkins. And right here is a jack-o-lantern. And we're going to have it climb the pallet there. And there is a yellow crookneck squash that seems dwarfed compared to all the other squashes. See the size difference? Anyways, it's uh, I think it's going to be alright. It's just slow. So here are my zucchinis. Oh, and they're doing beautiful. They are just full of zucchinis. Let me pull some leaves back and give you a peek in there. See? Oops. See all those zucchinis? They're just... It is just loaded down. I've already harvested a few. That's a Mexican type of zucchini. A cocazel, I think it's called. I can't remember. But so they're doing beautiful. So I have three of the Black Beauties and two of the Cocosil. And I have three of the, or two of the, the straight yellow zucchinis and one of the Crookneck. So, and over here is an acorn squash that is climbing. And it's got flowers and little squash on it. And over here is the butternut squash, and it will climb. It's actually spreading out everywhere. There's my strawberry towers that I made out of milk crates and stuck PVC down in the sides so I could water each crate and give it nutrients. I give it vermistera worm casting. It's a nice big red berry there. So, and this is a pine berry. I don't know if you're familiar with pine berries. It's a white to pinkish, let's see, white to pinkish berry and it gets red seeds when it's ripe. And this one's, this one's just about ripe. So I grow pine berries with my strawberries. They have kind of a pineapple-y taste. A strawberry pineapple taste. There's another pine berry right there. So this, oh here we go, here's a ripe pine berry. See, it's pink with red, with red seeds. That's a pine berry. And they're a tart sweet. So I have two heads of cabbage and I put them in this insect netting because the cabbages in our area 
well, most cabbages get um, infested with oh, cabbage moss. That white moth it lays its it lays its little eggs all over our cabbage, and those eggs hatch out into these green little tiny worms, and they devour our cabbages. So I purchased these insect netting bags that you cinch around the bottom of the cabbage and it protects the, them from being infested by the insects. And I got those on Amazon and they have them in different sizes. I got the largest size bags for the cabbages. There's another strawberry that's doing beautifully. Now over here against this fence I have some 15 gallon pots and I have a scotch curly cow and another scotch curly kale, and a Napa cabbage. And over here I have um, sweet potato slips that I put in these three pots. Uh, it's a cool climate here, so I'm not sure if I'll get any sweet potatoes, but the greens are edible, and you can stir fry them or put them in salad. So if nothing else, I'll get to do that. And the blackberries are coming on. See the blackberry bushes? And there's some blackberries. They're just now coming on. I love being able to come out into my backyard and pick blackberries. There's my carrot bed. And you might be wondering why I have plastic forks in there. And I have plastic forks in my carrot bed uh, to um, try and keep the cats from using my garden box as a litter box. For some reason they like this carrot box and uh, that's the last thing I want is cat feces and urine in my carrots. So I stuck in these plastic forks in the bare areas where I've already harvested carrots and started new seeds. Over here I have beautiful chard. I have Swiss chard and I have rainbow chard. And there's my spinach going to seed. So lots of chard. I want to show you how big and beautiful these leaves are. Isn't that gorgeous? So the chard over here wasn't eaten up by slugs, just the stuff in the grow bags. Oh, never mind. Here's a chard where a slug got to it. So this is my celery. And it's going to seed so that I can collect celery seed for seasoning. And here's my garlic bed. I'm growing soft neck garlic. And it's just about ready to harvest. You know, uh, soft neck garlic is usually ready to harvest anytime after July 4th. So it's, um, see how it's getting the brown dried up leaves around the stalks? Well, that tells you that um, down below where the garlic bulb is, that it's getting the dry brown um, papery covering. So that tells you it's about to, ready to harvest. So I'll probably be harvesting next week. Some are ready now, but there's a few that probably need another week. And I have volunteer potatoes growing in with my garlic. There, see the potato is flowering. It's another picture of my strawberry tower. So, there's our hummingbird feeders, which bring the bumblebees as well. There's bumblebees eating. No hummingbirds right now, but we have to fill up our hummingbird feeders. We have five of them. Three here and two hanging from our cucumber tower trellis. And we have to fill our hummingbird feeders every morning. So over here in the kale bed, it's doing okay. I had chopped a kill down just to the main stalk because it went to seed and it's starting all over again. And another scotch curly kill. And some parsley. And right there is a red Russian kill that I started from seed. And my broccoli is, is now getting spindly and wanting to flower. So I'll probably be pulling that out soon. Now I want to show you this. This was a head of cabbage 
and I cut it off and I left some of the bottom and now it's growing new cabbages, new cabbage heads. It's growing three of them. So I have some ocean kill that's really soft and tender right there and my dino kill. And this dino kill over here was getting eaten up by slugs so I put it in one of the netting. And there's um, an older scotch curly kale doing fabulous. And parsley and red Russian kale. And I have a uh, Napa cabbage growing in that one. And I just planted some thyme. And there's volunteer dill coming up because I had dill growing in this box last year. And let's see. So my passion flower along the fence, they're blooming. I love this flower. That's a passion flower. If I lived in a warm tropical climate, I could get passion fruit, but I don't. I live in a cool, coastal, foggy climate. Right up next to the redwoods. Over there is the redwoods. And there's fog hanging out in the redwoods. So that's the passion flower growing all along my fence line. There's one getting ready to open. And I just have various flowers growing through here. I like to bring in the pollinators. And oh, there's another passion flower that's bloomed. So beautiful. And sunflowers. They haven't created their flower yet. They're starting though. If you can look down in there, there's a sunflower starting. Geranium. Nasturtium and some mint, spearmint, and a tree collards. These can grow to be about 18 feet. There's a tree collard that broke off and we just stuck it in the ground. But it's a beautiful plant. So I'm really excited that my vegetable hut is now starting to get covered with with the vining plants. It's, the green beans are climbing. This is the outside of the vegetable hut. So there's the little flowers on there and little miniature green beans. There might even be some bigger green beans right over here. I don't know if you can see those. There's some green beans. I can't wait to have, oh look at this one. Here are some purple beans. Look at that. Purple beans. So next week I'll probably have enough beans to do my first canning load. Or some dilly beans. So the beans are climbing. So excited. Here's my blueberries. See the berries on there? See in July everything starts to produce here in Crescent City. Yep, I have blueberries. So there's a new dirt patch. That's where we had the pallet with all of the grow bags on it that created a habitat for slugs and snails. So we pulled off the pallet and we turned the soil over and we'll be planting something in there for the fall. Maybe more heads of cabbage with insect barrier on them, of course. And there's Maximum Katniss, my garden cat. He loves it back here. Another look at the veggie hut with all of my green beans climbing high. And my pea vines climbing high. The spring peas there, the Oregon pod peas, they're about done. They're getting yellow and See, lettuce started bolting because we had some really warm weeks, so I've harvested most of the lettuce, and I'm just seeing if some of it grows back. And my peach tree. <coughs> Excuse me. So inside the veggie hut. So exciting to come in here and see everything growing. my step ladder so that I can reach the peas that are way up there and the beans. See the peas. 
and the strawberries and some bush beans. So I planted bush beans along the lower boxes and there's lots of beans on those coming, starting. Lots of bush beans. Oh yeah, there they are. So pretty. Here's an old buoy. We planted a strawberry in there. The beans. And here is my pumpkin pie pumpkins. Let me pull these leaves back and show you what I got. I have a pumpkin. Over there is a Hubbard squash and a butternut. And more heads of cabbage that I put in the netting. Alright, there is the cucumber dill palace, <laughs> as Dan likes to call it. The cucumber palace. Pickle palace, he calls it. I call it my cucumber trellis, because that's what it is. So my dill, all my dill is flowering. That's fennel. And then dill, and more dill. And then my mammoth sunflowers. And the cucumbers. Look at the cucumbers on this side. These are all pickling cucumbers. There's one slicing cucumber at the bottom, and at the other end there's some lemon cucumbers. And let's look in here and see. Yep, see I have cucumbers. There's a few. Then over in these, on this side of the cucumber trellis, in pots I have more cucumbers. Those are lemon cucumbers. Then these are pickling cucumbers. More dill. I had planted some heads of lettuce in there. So here's more of my passion flower along this fence. And lots of blackberries behind the greenhouse in my neighbor's yard. So onions, I have Walla Walla sweet onions in that pot. Walla Walla onions. And then yellow onions. And here is another look at the cucumbers and that mammoth sunflower that is almost eight feet tall. Another head of cabbage. And a Napa cabbage. Now these are russet potatoes. And here is another tree collard. It's, it's tall. It's four and a half feet tall. So I have, uh, I believe these are Yukon potatoes. And then yellow potatoes or red potatoes. I'm not sure. Dan's the one doing the potatoes, so he would know which kind are in which container. That's his thing is the potatoes. So along this fence line I have different things growing. Sunflowers and nasturtiums, and here is our artichokes. We don't eat artichokes, we just grow them for the flowers and to bring the bees. More nasturtiums and another sunflower. Aren't those pretty? And my dahlia is blooming. Isn't that pretty? And another artichoke. 
All right, let's go look at the greenhouse. My tomatoes are doing so well. I'm so excited. I've actually picked my first two red to tomatoes the day before yesterday. Here's some things I just have in pots along the side. Lavender and thyme. Some strawberries. And green onions. And my cilantro that I'm letting go to seed for the coriander. And some uh, chives. And lemon balm and sage. Lettuce that's going to seed. So lots of great things going on. Lots of flowers. Here is a hydrangea. Now with this hydrangea, I just spliced a piece off of a, a hydrangea out in the front yard and stuck that in the dirt uh, about eight, nine months ago. And now I have a little hydrangea that's ready to be planted. And there's another lavender and catnip and more nasturtium. different flowers growing in these hanging pots. All right, are you ready for this? Look at this greenhouse. The tomatoes are to the roof on both sides. Just loaded with tomatoes. Clusters and clusters of tomatoes. These are the San Marzano paste tomatoes. Oh, they're just beautiful. And they're just now starting to get to yellow a little bit. And basil, bell peppers. Bell peppers are doing beautiful. Lots of tomatoes. Those are the yellow, the golden pear tomatoes. Just full of them. I see one starting to turn. And another. It's a jungle in here. More basil. And those, I don't know what they are. Um, it was given to us and they couldn't remember what they planted. I think it might be some sort of chili pepper. I'm not sure. But we'll see. And there's my Myers lemon that we started from a splice a couple years ago. And I have more dill starts and another Scotch curly kale. And I have red tomatoes. Look at that. Beautiful red tomatoes. But this is the early girl. And she is loaded down. She's loaded down. And those are my Amish paste. It's got lots. Now these are going to be a purple green. And I cannot remember what they're called. I need to look at my seed packet. This was a gift from Baker's Creek. And I have red cherry tomatoes over there. And back there is a splice off of a fig tree. And it's doing alright. I have basil. I've been clipping a lot of the basil. I clip it and I put it in these uh, trays with uh, olive oil. And back there is a sage. But lots of cherry tomatoes. I just love it. All right. And there's Maximum Katniss. He thought he would just hang out right here. He's been following me around in the garden. So this is my rhubarb bed, and I have a rhubarb that is just a, a plain green stalk. And then I have the rhubarb that is, most people recognize as rhubarb because, whoops, sorry about that, it has a red stem. So I have the two types. And those are some wild berries that we planted in. But right here is the wall of blackberries that grows over my neighbor's yard and into my yard. See, there's a bumblebee. 
doing its thing. Pollinators are so, impo so important in the garden. So we're just starting to get blackberries. They're just coming on. It's so exciting to be able to come out and Last year I was able to fill three gallon baggies full of blackberries to freeze over for winter use. And this year the blackberries bushes have doubled in size coming over our yard. So I have a feeling I will get six gallons this year. But this year I'm going to freeze them into uh, quart size baggies. Because we don't really make blackberry pie. I don't like blackberry pie. It's too seedy. Um, but we like to have them for smoothies or to drizzle over ice cream or I don't know, just whatever. I might make some seedless blackberry jam this year. Who knows? But here's my palette wall. It's mostly flowers now because the lettuce has bolted and been harvested. There is some thyme there and some fuchsias. I love fuchsias. And here are the wild sea strawberries that we gathered off of the beach and stuck in here and I mixed some sand in with that soil. So this is my garden update for July. Everything's looking real good. Things are coming on. I'm harvesting. Um, We've had to do get creative to avoid the slugs and snails from eating up the garden, but it's um you know it's always a challenge, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it to me. Oh, I see lots of hummingbirds in the hummingbird feeder. Maybe I can go over and show you. We get hundreds of them. You know, hummingbirds are great to bring to your garfid to your garden. They bring down the aphid population because they love to eat aphids and others and they are pollinators as well uh, they saw me coming and they flew off sometimes they're more friendly I think it's because I'm holding a camera so I hope you liked this video if you did will you please give me a thumbs up it helps my channel get recognized by YouTube and if you feel like it you can subscribe I won't be offended if you don't all right, I'll talk to you soon.